You know what? I would. Be- I believe. I believe more in the ability of King Odin from Odin Sphere being able to bang someone without killing her than I do believe Crew being able to bang someone without killing her. <laughs> it, it's like, yeah, yeah, King Odin might be big and muscly, but at least he can hold himself up. I don't think Crew could hold his own weight, let alone thrust. I just imagine <laughs> suffocating the poor bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and no, 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 not suffocating her, breaking her pelvis. <laughs> My um, stoners, I guess, that stone people in the Bible. That's all I heard. Um, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to oh, God. a belated new episode of Jack and Daxter Fan Theories. Uh, today we have a very special guest. Uh, a very, very special guest who has Kingdom of Hearts memorabilia all over his house. And I'm jealous. Uh, Michael Bergen. <laughs> I'm pronouncing that right, aren't I? Uh, what's up? Uh, my YouTube channel is NerdRage36. Uh, I just talk about... Various subjects that I've either noticed or theorized in the past, and quite frankly, I don't give a shit if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> nice. Nice! Yeah. That's a good attitude. I've checked out his channel, it's actually really interesting. I haven't watched any video fully yet, but what I've watched, I've really liked what he was saying. So yeah, if you like what we do here, you'd love what he does there. So Let me guess, if you're like me, Keith, you watch like five seconds. Yeah, yeah. But like me, Keith, I need, you watch I like have, five I seconds. I want to have a proper time to like actually concentrate. <laughs> I, do re- I, do recall you sa- I do recall you saying that the Mar logo that I've made in Photoshop, you said looked like cancer. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I said. <laughs> There's no M in the Jack and Daxter logo font. I had to make one. I, I know it's you're not paying. Just that. I know you're paying. It's, it's, there should be a Jack and Daxter font. Someone needs to make a Jack and Daxter font because there's no official one released and it annoys the hell out of me when I'm making videos. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, the sad thing about that font, though, is actually that it wasn't the M that made me cringe. It was the fact that you cut out, like, stuff from the game cases on it. And like, kind of glued them on there. <laughs> yeah. That's... Well, actually, this will make it cringe even more with the M part. I actually just chopped off like the large, like cross top of the J to make that M. <laughs> <laughs> like, I cut a piece of it off and then rearranged it. That's a lot of you effort, effort for... into a thumbnail. There, you got an A for that. effort. <laughs> yeah, you got an A for effort. So, you want to continue? Um, what what are we talking about? This is something that I talked about with you a while ago, and the whole Jack is Mar thing. Okay, so basically the the breakdown of it is at the end of Jack and Daxter, uh, no, at the end of Jack three, sorry, Jack goes into that spaceship with the precursors. Like you see him step into the thing, you see the door close, and it's it's not like a peop- I've seen people just pull this out of their ass saying, oh no, he walked toward the light, went around the ship. And then just fake them out. Like, what? What would, <laughs> what would even be the point of that? And we know, and we know that the the precursors are capable of time travel. They built the rift, so so yeah. Like he went into the precursor spaceship and did whatever he did, and then came back in time to show up at, right behind Daxter. I mean, those two events happened pretty much at the same time. So you can't say he just faked them out. He he had to have time traveled. But uh, okay. but no like some of my like some of my other reasonings behind this it, it they're kind of straightforward I mean you have Ashlyn just straight up say wait Jack is Mar the Mar she's a stupid fucking redhead 
And all but, redheads watching this is turned off. But on top of that, there would be so many massive plot holes that you could drive a freight train through if Mar was some other guy. Like, why would he build this eco cannon and not use it? Why did he disappear? How did he disappear? If the eco oh. cannon and the precursor stone were supposed to work simultaneously to defeat Kor, why did he just lock the precursor stone away in the city? There is so can many I, plot holes if Mar was some random guy from the past. If, can I uh, if, intervene? Can I intervene? Go ahead. You said that he didn't have, that he said that he didn't use it. The gun. The gun. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's my little problem with that. Now, I got this from a source, not quite a reliable source, if you can consider crew reliable at all. But Crew said, the poor fool died before he had a chance to use it, and all that nonsense. So, can you fit that puzzle? Can you put that piece of the puzzle together? Poor fool died before he got a chance to use it? Maybe. Yep. Well, possibly a fake your own death scenario, because, I mean, again, if Jeff, like, the whole idea of Mar didn't, finish any of his plans and some of his plans didn't make any sense if he was some separate person but if he was jack from the future having traveled back in time then setting up all these events so that his own past self can complete these events in the future then he's like okay i set all this up now i just got now i just gotta leave it to myself and maybe he just faked his own death so that people would but think he uh, he disappeared, and then he passed on the city to Demos, who then lost it to Praxis. But you even just said it's not a reliable source to listen to crew. I mean, dude's so fat he can't even he can barely leave his own bar. How would he how would he know what happened back then? <laughs> I've always wondered how he actually got well, out of his bar. Uh, the whole front know, opens up like a garage. The whole the ceiling. <laughs> Oh, he has a back Maybe door. just burst to the scene. But what I think, what I think though, is um, with that though, with crew, you got to go into crew. You have to like go up inside him, and like you have to feel him out. You have to Don't feel exactly what he is about. <laughs> you know, you have to really, really, really dissect that fat motherfucker. If you know what I mean, like you have to like. Like, Get him like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, you got to take some hints here, right? One of them, years ago when I was an art collector, you know, things no, like no, that. You forgot the pause, because obviously he was an art thief, but he paused when he said, collector. <laughs> right. So basically, what I'm thinking is, if he's into art, right? Okay, so let's yeah. let's take it to Uncharted, right? Now let's put crew in Nathan Drake's position, right? Donut Drake with no hair and looks like he's just got through cancer. Okay, let's just let's just put that in his in his position, right? Right? Think about crew. Oh my God! Look, it's Shambhala. Things like that, you know. Like if he's collecting art, stealing art, you have to think he might be a little bit of a historian. That's my point. He might be a little this? bit. <laughs> what? <should> <laughs> No, we're talking about no, Donald cancer patient. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. Just think about this. Think if Crew had the mindset kind of of like Nathan Drake, right? If that's the case, he would be kind of like a uh, kind of, I guess, a historian in a sense. Like, he would want to know the pieces of his artwork. And the things that he stole were heavily influenced by Mar himself. So you would have to think that maybe he himself was trying to uncover the clues of Mar while getting rich in the process. Well, well, if you're trying to connect it to like a Nathan Drake type thing, then like, and I'll, I'll be honest, I haven't played the Uncharted games, though I have seen mo- a many people cover the material. And so but from, and from what I'm seeing, Nathan Drake doesn't know everything about the treasures he's going no. after. So like, he like he discovers new things about them or he's still left scratching his head at a few points so if you're trying to connect uh crew to nathan drake with all the artifacts of mar and saying oh yeah mar just died before he got a chance to use the gun that could just be a lost to time sort of detail like no he didn't die he just disappeared right he gave the city to demos and stuff 
But what I'm trying to figure out here is like put Mar in the situation of Sir Francis Drake. Okay. The person who he's trying to find, right? Yeah. You find the coffin, but there's nothing in it. You enter the tomb of Mar and there's no body in it. You know what I mean? So you could be right that he's actually faking his own death. But also at the same time, if you go off of what Cruz said and that he may have figured something out and that he said the poor fool died before he had a chance to make it. Hence, there's also a tomb of Mar. You have to think if he actually made this gun so that his past self could use it as what has happened actually in the series then that means his fu- his past self and his future self had to have died at some point and he knew this and then he had to renew his old self somehow by going through the rift ring which means well, technically speaking he's fucking god <laughs> well no think about this for a second like the tomb of mar that's just the name what about that place says like grave whatsoever even if you try and connect it to like the Egyptian the pyramids, tomb. like even if you try to connect it to like the Egyptian pyramids where they have all these different chambers, like some chambers to ward off um, potential robbers or this chamber of every worldly possession they ever had. Like even if you try to connect it to that, it still looks nothing like a tomb or a grave of any kind. There's a lot of trials and puzzles and stuff that would have tested the heir to the throne, which is Jack. Which is, I guess you can call him Mar Jr. if freaking Deimos named him after Mar. So, like, it's a tr- it's n- it's called a tomb, but I think it's more of a trial area. A- like, again, and the only thing it was guarding was the precursor stone. You didn't see what could have been a, a – so- there's nothing that could have been, like, a coffin. Nothing in there said exactly. – Nothing exactly. said tomb. So – so it's like true. again, the like he could have just called it the tomb. He could have called it the tomb of Mar, as a misleading and, title. Yeah, a misleading title. Uh, dear, I like this uh, because I think there's a really simple explanation to it. Jack knows at the end of Jack Two that he uh, that he went back in time. That his kid kid him went back in time, and then he's gonna end up back in Haven City again in a few years' time. So. Knowing that, not Mar knowing that, who if Jack is Mar, knowing that, he made all this stuff knowing that him himself will end up using it again. So he remade it after using it himself. That is exactly is how- what I that is exactly my theory. Like at the end of Jack Three, when he steps into the precursor vessel, he goes back in time, builds Haven City, makes all these makes the tomb uh, with all these tests and stuff, builds the eco cannon, help helps the helps the precursors gives this gives the city over to demos and then travels back to the future mm-hmm. the, the way they've established time travel in jack and daxter is that it's kind of and i'm bringing in another franchise to try and justify my point uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like doctor who there are fixed moments in time that need to occur for things to flow as they are supposed to like jack going to the future to then send his past self to sandover village to then fight Gaul and Maya, and right. then become and then become adult Jack to then go into the future to defeat Kor. So the way I see it is that he just did that a second time. Like the first time was when he sent his past self into the past to live out the events of Precursor Legacy, and then the second time is at the end of Jack Three when he goes into the Precursor vessel and then travels back in time to set up everything that Mar did because he is Mar. He set everything up so that it can be completed in the future. I see. I like see. it's just I see. Like it's so, just setting setting up events that he knows are going to be completed later on. So to set it in dumb terms, to set it in dumb terms, dumb man's terms. Layman's when Jack terms. little Jack goes back into um when when Jack when the kid Jack goes to the past to begin the events of Precursor Legacy, the time rift in the future is set back to the same time at the beginning of Jack 2 so that everything is the same as how it was and thus going in a never-ending circle. So that basically the beginning of time is the beginning of Jack 2. That is the beginning of the story, in a sense, for um, Jack. Well, for yes, for yes, for Jack's personal timeline. But I would – and I sort of went over this in the um, – timeline breakdown video I did. Technically, the beginning of the timeline for the entirety of the franchise, or at least this particular story arc, 
is the end of Jack 3 when he goes into the precursor vessel to then live out the events of Mar. Because that's what... And Haven City was built, and then that's when um, Deimos was given control of the city, and eventually he... Like, he had his son, he had Jack, who was then taken from him from Vigor when, when a Praxis took over the city. And then that's when Jack 2 happens, where adult Jack from the past sends his own past self into the events of Precursor Legacy, and then that's when Jack's personal timeline begins. Okay, so after all of that question, so basically with your theory, we can pretty much confirm that Mar is Jack by going through the time, the the thing, to finish off everything that he needed to do to set the events of Jack 1 and Jack 2 into the proper order, right? Yes. So then that means the second part, the second part of this theory is where did jack go specifically what was there before what was there before? Real question. <laughs> well, actually that this sort of also kind of makes a weird spider web of a timeline because i would assume by the time where he where he went with the precursors at the end of jack three would have probably been just after he went through the time rift at the beginning of Jack 2, because like we know Sandover Village is Dead Town. So he went to just after his past self left for the future to then team up with various people in the in his own past, like the people he met before, to build Haven City. And that could also connect to whole, my whole family tree concept. Like tr like maybe the maybe the eco sages helped him build the shield wall, the eco grid, all this stuff that helped Haven City thrive. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out here, okay? From what the, the writers said, okay? The writers themselves. If you've ever watched a commentary, the commentary versions mm -hmm. of any of these cutscenes, you know that the writers, or at least the people who are designing the, the scenes, how they supposedly said it was meant to go. Really? Is Com Jack was supposed to go? No, continue. Yeah, I I remember this. I remember this. I know this one's real. From um, and this is from a long time ago, about like a very long time ago when I watched commentary. So I could my memory could be distorted, but um, from what I heard, they them say that Jack was supposed to um. Well, they didn't really like. What they said was they didn't want to do this. They didn't want to say Jack's going to go on and start saving other planets and shit and becoming, like, the savior of the galaxy to actually become Mar, in a sense, and, like, becoming, like, a super-duper hero. You know what I mean? And so they said, nah, we're going to bring bring them back. We're going to bring them back. We're going to have Jack walk around the back and be like, you know, you couldn't last a second without me and all that Jack's, stuff. Jack's uh, about to leave and do his thing. Um, it was really kind of a funny point that actually, up until the very last minute, we thought Jack was going to get on the uh, on the uh, precursor ship and blast off into space to part for parts unknown until we kind of talked about it. And uh, Evan Wells had a good point that he thought, well, you know what, actually, we should do is we should ellipse back to the beginning of the uh, the game and have uh, Jack change his mind just like Daxter did in the opening scene when uh, suddenly when the dust clears, um, Daxter's there waiting with Jack because they're inseparable. And of course, Jack is as well. So it was a nice circular storytelling idea, and it ended up being perfect. So that's how I think that they were planning on on the thing they were going to. Again, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean. And again, there's huh? th what? that that can easily be contradicted because it's never the writers talking in the commentary. It's always the animators saying exactly. how they animate scenes. Exactly. So they, could, they could know like just exactly. as much as us. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they, they could all be speculation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the animators, um, the animators probably were just like spitballing ideas with the writers. Like maybe they, like maybe the writers were, had that planned as well, but they were just, but the animators just said, no, we don't want Jack to come across as this galaxy-saving superhuman. But right. again, yeah, like not going, not going to the rest of the universe and saving other planets. That doesn't rule out the whole traveling back in time and setting yes. forth the of the series exactly exactly which kind of makes me wonder a few things you know like say uh say there was a jack four right and say, fingers say crossed. that was <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> right and say we're going in that direction right jack goes along to go and figure out his whatever you know 
And that's how he starts his training is like, save this planet. Here you go. Drop you off. Do it. And you're like, what the hell? It's training. We're not supposed to tell you what to do. You know, shit like that. You know, just kind of like, I guess, kind of like a, a beginning of the game or something. And then further on during the thing, he's trying to figure out what his true purpose is. And he finds out that his true purpose is to set the emo- the the uh, the events that happened in the first and second game right. Or something like say like say say like he's looking back into okay like best example for this honestly Dragon Ball Xenoverse you look at the scrolls time's fucked up you know what I mean he's he looks Jack looks into the time looks into time and sees ah that's not really how that happened what the hell's going on got to go investigate this and figure out how to set shit back into back back right you see where I'm going with this yeah mm. so maybe it's like that because I've always I've always wanted to like be Jack like as an adult like as he is now and go back to like Sandover Village for some reason. I don't know why. I just always seen that would be really cool. Also more merit given to us just is because Jack But you can always just, but you can always just do the intro cutscene glitch in Jack too. That's adult Jack running around Sandover Village. Yeah, but there's no cutscenes, you know? There's no like reminisces reminiscences. No, yeah, yeah. And actually and actually kinda on that uh topic what the, and this is something I talked about in my what could be Jack 4 video. Um, just various concepts that could have been implemented for gameplay and story mechanics of uh, a, of a game like this where he goes back in time and sets forth the events of the future games. And like this could be when he meets Deimos and something that would would definitely I remember one that you mentioned that the current story writers for Naughty Dog, would not be able to pull off in Jack and Daxter's story. Mm -hmm. But this element of it could have potentially been like something they would do perfectly. Think about this. He is from the future. He knows Deimos is his father, and he knows that Deimos dies in his arms in the future. And then he meets young Deimos, who hasn't even gotten married yet and had a son. And the entire time he's building Haven City, he's bonding with his dad, but his dad doesn't know it. Not only would that be really good writing, but it would be so heartbreaking. It'd be heartbreaking and awesome at the same time. Oh, That's something that annoying think- bitch seam is always there, annoying the shit out of him. Like you are still here, eh. and shit, right? <laughs> this sounds so you- <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Um, that. Wow. That that is gonna make uh, one of my family tree theories a bit awkward if you don't like seam. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's no, no, no. I mean. I mean it like this, right? Like, say, like, Seam is still, like, a monk boy, okay? A monk boy, right? And I put quotations on that, monk boy. Yeah, I put okay? quotations on boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> monk boy, right? Yeah, so, like, I, I think that's just what Daxter called Seam, just to, just to be mocking. I don't think, I don't, no one even knows what Seam is. Like, Seam is like Krona from Soul Eater. It's like, are you a boy or a girl? Exactly. I don't <laughs> Whatever know. You do, exactly. Whatever you do, dr- do not determine its gender. It'll get triggered. Um, but, uh, <laughs> In 2016. Um, yeah, uh-huh. But what I'm trying to say is, like, what if, like, Damus is still, like, hanging around Seam? You know what I mean? But you still don't know wh- who that character is. And, like, at some point during the line, like... Damus has a son or so, or something, and you're like, how the hell did that happen? What the hell? Are you asexual or something? Not tell me something? You know, like, you just don't know. But, and then, like, there's, like, a scene where, like, Seam takes off its hat thing, whatever the hell, and she just, like, long hair, like, flows down, and you're like, I am the mother of this child! And shit, and, you know. Yeah, that, like, that was, okay, uh, you brought it up, so I'm just gonna, like, this was originally gonna be in my uh, family tree thing. I've always thought Seam was Jack's mother. I like, just about after, to say it. Just about to say it. Like after, <laughs> like after, pra- like, like after Praxis took control. Like after Praxis took control of the city from Deimos and Vigor stole the young Jack. Like Deimos became Deimos became super serious and just decided, I did survival is all that matters. And then his mom, like if if, his, if Seam is his mom, just suddenly is like. There is no hope left for the world, and then devoted herself to being a precursor monk and like meditated, praying, all this stuff. Like right. it's kind of like it would kind of be like very bizarre uh, comparison, but it would be like that alternate timeline Batman story where his parents become Batman and the Joker, and because he was the one who was murdered. 
It's like it's like they take these oh. huge. It's like his parents take these huge, like po- almost polar opposite paths because of the trauma of losing their son. Mm. Right, and there's kind of so. What I'm thinking, Stainless always references talking to his monks, and he's him saying, "My monks are saying the world's going to come to an end." So that means there's a closeness between him and the monks, and that's probably said. Yeah, you know. And the yeah. other thing that 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 really gets me though, the thing that gets me is go back to Jack three, and this is actually fresh in my mind because I'm currently playing through Jack three. Right, when you first meet Seam, they have little eye contact. And it seems like Seam knows something. Like, he, it, I'm just gonna say she for now. She knows something, okay? Like she, she recognizes she recognizes Jack, but Demos doesn't. And she's scared because she doesn't want her little boy to go out to get, fighting. So that's why she's always like, "Heroes think they can save the world when they themselves are lost," and things like that. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, would that would connect because it's like like she says when they themselves are lost and she lost her son. So it's like, mm-hmm. she doesn't want, him, she doesn't want exactly. him to get lost. She doesn't want him to get lost again. All right. So let's picture, let's picture scenes, death scene here. Okay. Just as a figurative thing. Right. Let's see. Like all that shit happens. And Jack has a flashback of all these moments and shit. There you go. Heartbreaking. <laughs> Another heartbreaking. Oh. Like Jack's just sitting there like, like what the fuck <laughs> again, twice, no, twice. Parents- Mine dies in my arms. God damn it! <laughs> Both of them died in my arms. Wait a Jeez. minute. Wait a minute. My best friend is a precursor. Wait a minute. My best friend is a precursor, and my father-in-law is the guy who can control Green Eco. Hey, you assholes! Come over here and bring them back to life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like yeah. Samos is the Green Eco sage. Daxter's a precursor. Bring them back to life, you idiots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like I, I do think I do think that the modern Naughty Dog writers could potentially do like the awesome but also heartbreaking character interactions between adult Jack and young Demos. It's like it's like I know you're my father, but I can't tell you. Just one thing Naughty Dog oh, can do now, it's character building. <laughs> it's like the Tinder oh my- one for now. So if they made a Jack That was the most perfect what? I'm sorry. That, that was just the most perfect line you said there, uh, uh, Michael. What? I know you're my father, but I can't tell you. <laughs> well, it's just true. Did. Then he would fuck up the timeline. Yeah, exactly. I know, but I'm like acting like you actually like said that to Deimos, and then like freaking Jack's just like, ah, oh, crap, baskets. And, like the whole freaking timeline gets <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> well, considering that in Jack three, what with the uh, character. With the um, character, well not, well, not bios, but character models with the voiceovers, they all know that it's like, they all know it's a game and they're basically like talking about it like behind the scenes. So it's like, so it's like if they did that for a Jack 4, and it's like, yeah, I can't believe how many times during, during a cutscene I would say, Deimos, you're my father, damn it. <laughs> Cut. Hey, Deimos. Oh, come on. Oh, shots fired! And and it's like, God damn it, take 12. (laughs) It's like like Jack goes back, like teleports right away, takes a giant gun and destroys that timeline. Like, we're starting again! (laughs) God damn it! (laughs) Like, but, um... What I'm thinking of for like a really good like like an ease into that that moment that heartbreaking moment, like after a while, like Damos is like Jack, I want you to meet my son, and he sees himself well, again, and he like sits there well, no, and no, he no, just no. like eyes inside. Well, no, well, no, if he's in the past, he would be referring to himself by Mar. So it's like Mar, right. I want you to meet my son. Uh, I want you to meet my like... son, Vegeta. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I'm thinking, like, if Jack has to see his younger self again, it would probably be, like, straight-up newborn before they even gave him a name. And then when Jack disappears into the future after giving the city to Deimos, Deimos then is inspired to name his son after his best friend. It's what if like, Jack is still kind of, uh, what if Jack is still kind of, what's the word, um, ignorant of his whole time, like, of, like, time anomalies and shit? And what if he's like, I gotta go and save myself! That makes no sense! You'll understand later! And, like, he's trying to, like, run after him before Vigor can get to him and shit. And there's, like, this badass, like, time lock thing. But no matter what you do, you fail it anyways. Yeah, again. He's trying to stop that from happening. 
again, Doctor Who logic, solidified moments of time. Mm -hmm. So, like, what if it's something like that, and when he does it, like, the precursors or something get really pissed off with him and shit, and they're like, we told you, Mar, not to fuck with time, you stupid yellow-haired dumbass. <laughs> and you're like, what are you, what was I supposed to do? Just let myself get kidnapped by a freaking bald-headed comb-over pedophile? <laughs> and vulgar? Oh, no, he, no, 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 he would, re he would refer to him like Daxter. It's like, listen, Count Vulgar, it's Vega, whatever. <laughs> Don't you just like to curl up in the shade sometimes? Learn to how they prance around in their bikinis, just how they jiggle. <laughs> you know something I've always, you know something I've always wanted to see, like if Vigor wanted to abuse uh, Light Eco, and like oh. drawing from Kingdom Hearts here, it's like Xehanort wants to abuse darkness, Vigor wants to abuse light. I would wonder, I wonder what would happen if like there was a video game villains meet up like every year and it's like Zayn and Vigor are just staring at each other angrily. It's like, I hate you. I hate you more. <laughs> I want to control the darkness. Well, I want to control the light. <laughs> Will you two just get married already? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. Vigor's married to Cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which, which kind of brings me to the question in Jack X. Um, Cleaver, where's... Vigor got real annoying, so I skinned and bobbed him. Made him <laughs> noise <stream. laughs> He is it weird that when I was a kid and I had to do that race with um, Cleaver, and he's like, "I'll I'll pit Daxter against one of the racing vehicles," and it's like skinned and butted. He'd make a noise treat. I for some reason, whenever I saw that scene, I visualized like a game over screen where Vigor's holding Daxter by his, no, 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 Vigor, where Cleaver's holding Daxter by his tail and then just swallowing him, like, boom. I, <laughs> I, I died so, uh, so many times purposely when I was a kid just to wait to see a scene and I was very disappointed and I didn't get one. I wanted to see Vigor actually, <laughs> me, or not Vigor, was, Cleaver actually eat Daxter. I got really scared every time I lost, I was like, no! <laughs> Daxter! Daxter! <laughs> Honestly, that, that could have made the story arc in a totally different direction. Oh my god. Think about that? Bring, Jack 3! Jack. It's confusing enough. <laughs> Ima imagine that, though. Jack 3, to save Daxter from getting eaten by a... No, 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 no. Jack, no, Jack, no, Jack 3. Jack versus the big bad wolf. And he, like, cuts open Cleaver's stomach like the, like the, uh, the lumberjack. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. God knows what would come hey, out of that Hey, you know what I just thought of? What if what if Cleaver's related to Crew? They both have names that start with K. Oh god. Uh -huh. And they do, uh -huh. some, they do have a similar accent, and they're both fat bastards. It's just one of them's strong, the other one can't even move. <laughs> Look at your legs! Oh baby, they're so chiseled. <laughs> <laughs> let let me guess. Dank murky water. Reese uh, worse than your breath. And an oyster fest. An oyster fest. And and not to mention weapons more lethal than your ever ever so tiny whiteies on a hot summer day. What is this a chewing? <laughs> <laughs> like Dax, Daxter when he's around Crew. God damn it, that is just so, even when Crew is dead, it's like Jack X like wait, Crew reproduced. <laughs> yes. So, ah! You know what? I would. Be I believe. I believe more in the ability of King Odin from Odin Sphere being able to bang someone without killing her than I do believe Crew being able to bang someone without <laughs> killing her. It, it's like, yeah, yeah, King Odin might be big and muscly, but at least he can hold himself up. I don't think Crew could hold his own weight, let alone thrust. I just imagine him suffocating the poor bitch. <laughs> and no, 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 not suffocating her, breaking her pelvis. <laughs> It'd be meaning something completely different when he says, I want to show you my crew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, where have we gone? Are we on... <laughs> Is the theory over where, yet? <laughs> where did all of this come from, goddamn? It's like, we, we were talking about Jack being Mar, and then all of a sudden we're talking about Crew's love life. <laughs> oh, yes. Sometimes, this is why I love the edition. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not forget about what about Sig? Who is Sig related to? Oh, there ain't no black people in fucking um Jack. Uh, 
The first the one. Legacy. Yeah. Shit, there ain't even any black people in the other games either. He's the only one. He's just like, I did, Chili Peppers. Let's go hunt out some metalheads. Yeah. Well, no, no. He's like Samuel L. Jackson. He just exists. You, he, you, can't, you can't justify him being any. You can't justify him existing. He just does. You don't question it. Sig exists, yeah, but, and he will kick your ass if you question it. But imagine, like, imagine if he was if he was like Samuel L. Jackson. I'm tired of these motherfucking metalheads in this motherfucking cave. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> uh. I need Phil Meyer to, to rehearse that line with me. I, oh my god, if there was a... Okay, we're, we, we got the freaking Ratchet and Clank movie. We're getting... Um, Sly. We're getting Sly... We're getting Sly Cooper. King, Kingdom Hearts is having a straight-to-Blu-ray straight to movie, but I want to see a Jack and Daxter movie. I don't... And it could be animated, it could be live-action, but one way or another, Sig oh. needs to be played by Sam Jackson. Yes. I don't want a Jack yes. movie, but with Sam Jackson is playing Sig, then yeah, I'm all in. <laughs> Actually, you know, I don't imagine want... Samuel Jackson wearing all that gear. <laughs> As if he wasn't badass Sig. enough. He'd look oh, like no, a metal, no, he'd look like no, a more mechanical even version. Even no, he'd look like a more better. mechanical version of Nick Fury. <laughs> no, even, even better, um, have you guys seen that at Comic-Con when various voice actors do, like there's a voice actors panel and various fans will suggest them scenes to reenact with different voices. If Sam Jackson was a part of that, I would say reenact a scene from Jack Two. <laughs> and and then you then have to fly. Just... What the fuck's Jack Two? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> Jack Two. <laughs> is the theory over, or did we like? Is it still going, or have we finished the theory? I don't. Yeah, I've lost track. Of yeah, I guess. Yeah, we just lost track. Um, but some, I guess summarizing it really, really quickly, um, I do think Jack is the original Mar. He wasn't just named for Mar. Well, he was named for himself. I did a Doctor Who reference in uh, my video talking about that. Um, so, yeah, Jack is the original Mar. He went back in time to set forth the events that he would then complete in the future. So, yeah, that's that's my two cents on the matter. I could be wrong, or Naughty Dog could just not give a shit anymore and leave it to player interpretation, but, heck, that's what one of the fun things about being a fanboy. Yep. Yeah. Yes, it is. But like Pecker always said, you never know what the future may hold. Last of Us 2. So. <coughs> Sorry. Um. Actually, oh my god. The, <laughs> the whole family tree thing, you just gave me a stupid idea because of Pecker. What if... The Flut Flut actually hooked up with a monkey. Oh my god. Because <laughs> remember, remember the Flut Flut thought Daxter was its mom. Oh, that god. or it fell in love with Daxter. It's like, yeah, Flut Flut's got some weird, weird kinks to it. So you're telling me that the Flut Flut fucked a uh, The monkey from Crash Bandicoot that throws stuff at you. <laughs> the Flut Flut would actually... No, the, yeah, that that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Crash Bandicoot does wiggle his eyebrows whenever he sees animal booty. <laughs> oh my god, have you seen have you have you seen Cat have you seen Cat Icarus's videos on Crash Bandicoot? It's like, what are you going to do to that pig, Crash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crash is gonna get him a god. Pig. Uh, again, we're going off track, damn it. It's amazing, though. Uh, okay. That's how these talks should, should be. Should we end Always. this, or, or, or what? I don't if, know. You, if you want to, I mean, I got my theory out I got my theory out there. If you want to end it right now, that's yeah. fine. Okay, yeah, so thanks, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know how I'm going to end this. I don't know if I'm just going to keep it as the way it is, or I'm just going to organize it a bit more. I think the latter would make more sense, but you'll see when it's uploaded, and thanks for watching, and yeah, bye!